As I mentioned in my Devin Bush video, the biggest trade of draft night was when the Steelers traded with the Broncos to pick up that number 10 overall pick. I mentioned in that video that I really like the pick from Pittsburgh's perspective because Bush is a very good player and he definitely fills a position of need that they've been looking to fill for quite some time. But I also don't hate it from Denver's perspective at all. I think it makes a lot of sense to trade down when you have several positions you need to fill. They received an extra second round pick in the 2019 draft and they're going to get an extra third round pick in the 2020 draft. So to move back 10 spaces, it's not really the end of the world. And I especially like it because of who they were able to pick up with that number 20 overall pick. I definitely think Denver was looking to get a quarterback in this draft, however, they trusted that they could get Drew Locke in the second round, and they instead decided to go with the best player available, and someone who fills a position of need, and that's Noah Fant. I really like Fant. I like him a lot, actually. One thing I like about him is that he's a 6'4 guy who can run a 4.50 40-yard dash, and that's really helpful. Having a big, tall receiving tight end you can throw to that can also run as fast as wide receivers really makes him very effective. He's essentially a matchup nightmare. If you want to put a safety against him, well, guess what? He's taller than most safeties. If you want to put a linebacker against him, well, guess what? He's faster than most linebackers. That's what makes him so effective. Like, take a look at this play to show off his speed, for example. It's going to be a play action to the top half of the screen, and he's actually going to be coming down to the bottom half of the screen. Now, this is something you're probably going to see on a good amount of these plays, and it's something that Iowa likes to do a lot, which is get creative with their play actions and use play actions to help open up other guys down the field. As I mentioned in my TJ Hawkinson video, I really think that that Iowa offensive coaching staff did a pretty good job of coming up with creative plays to help get guys open. Granted, this isn't the most creative play ever, it's a simple play action, but I'm just saying as a whole, I really like what they did. But anyways, once this play starts to develop, one key guy you're going to want to take a look at is that Northern Illinois player right over there. This is zone coverage, and he's in charge of covering that zone right there, and it's kind of a problem because as you see, he's clearly farther away from that zone. It's kind of understandable because there is no other Northern Illinois player in that section with the exception of that one guy who, of course, there's a safety back there who will be in charge of covering him. So it's okay to move a little bit farther in. However, he's definitely much farther in than you would want to be in this situation. And also, since there is another Iowa player running down towards the sideline in that area, this now means that the safety is going to get pushed back since that receiver is running a go route here. So that's where Fant comes in. Basically, at this point, the way it's going to work is it's going to see can he get to that zone and coverage quicker than a defensive back realizes that he's trying to get into that zone and coverage and then break back to the bottom of the screen to take away that route. That's the way this play is supposed to work out, but look at how quickly Fant is going to break down to the bottom of the screen and get open. I mean, that's just good football right there. That's just a guy that you love to have in your toolbox because he can run so quickly and that really is effective in a tight end position. Especially with a guy like Fant who can block, it can also open up the playbook for other plays. Like if you take a look at this one, for example, once again, it's going to be a play action to the top half of the screen. And it's also very clearly, obviously a run situation at this point. I mean, it's fourth down and goal at the one yard line and look at the formation Iowa is in. With two tight ends, two fullbacks and a half back in the game, they're definitely at least trying to sell as though it's going to be a running play. So if you're a defense, you're going to have to sell out the stop the run, but you do still need someone to be in charge of covering each eligible receiver just in case. So typically what you'd do is you'd run a blitz here and just have man coverage, but even when you're in charge of covering a receiver, basically your mind is going to be focused on stopping the run. That's basically the way this is going to work. So that's the guy in charge of covering Fant, however this is going to be play action, so Fant is going to be running a route right over there. Again, this is very similar to last time. Can Fant get going on his route quicker than defensive back realize that it's actually a route and he's not actually going to be blocking on his play and get back to make sure he covers him up? And once again, that answer is going to be an absolute yes. He's able to get easily open and make a pretty tough catch because that wasn't the best throw. It was a little bit lobbed up a bit too much and a bit too far. Not a terrible throw by any means, but it definitely could have been a little bit lower, although that's okay because Fant was able to still make the catch. That's also partially probably why the 6'4 part of him comes in as well, as he is so tall that even if he missed the ball a little bit too high, it's still a pretty easy catch for Fant. Here's another play of a very similar type thing happening. Once again, it's going to be play action to the top half of the screen, and Fant is going to be running a corner route this time. That's the player who's going to be in charge of covering him this time, and it's basically just going to be a pretty straight up play. Unlike the last play, when it was very clearly a run situation that they just fooled them with play action on, this is going to be pretty clearly a passing situation that they're still going to try to fool them with play action on. It's second down and nine in this situation, so typically the only times you run would be a game theory type situation where you're either trying to establish the run or when you're trying to catch them off guard. So Northern Iowa here is definitely going to be aware of a potential run, but they're really looking to guard the pass here. So the second fan starts running his route, then the player who's in charge of covering him is going to get back and make sure he tries to cover him. But again, one thing that's going to make Fant so effective is look at how quickly he runs this route. I mean, that's just great speed, great acceleration, and he's able to get open and make the catch. When you have the ability to get up to your top speed so quickly, and you are just so fast to begin with, it can really mean so much. But it's also not just that. I mean, not always when you're running a route do you have to run that route as quick as you possibly can. Sometimes it makes sense to not run your top speed throughout the route, and Fant knows when that makes sense. Like, if you take a look at this play, for example, it's going to be a cover two zone. Basically, what Iowa's going to do is have a tight end who's not Fant on this play run that route right there, which in theory will cause a Northern Iowa player to run over and cover him. 
From there, Fant will run a crossing route to the top half of the screen, with basically the whole goal of trying to get open in the flat on the top half of the screen, because in theory, the Northern Iowa player who's in charge of covering the flat will now move out of position. But in order to do this, they have to fool that opposing player, and to make sure they fool him, Fant can't just instantly run into that zone, because then he'll realize, oh, I have to make sure I'm covering the flat right here. So notice how he kind of takes a little bit off when he's on that route. He's basically just running a little bit slower than everyone else is running there. Now, he's not jogging, obviously. He's still running, but he just isn't running as fast as we know he can, as we've seen from the past couple of plays. So now, while that Northern Iowa player is very far deep, this now means that that zone in the top half of the screen is going to be wide open, and Fant can try to run in that direction. And worth mentioning, another Northern Iowa player is going to realize what's going on at this point. However, by the time he breaks in, it's actually too late, and he takes kind of a poor angle anyways, so it doesn't really matter too much. That's really key. I mean, I don't care if you're Usain Bolt. I mean, you have to be able to run routes, and Fant's a great route runner. And it's not just that. I mean, he can be effective in several different ways. Like on this one, it's fourth down and two, so it's obviously a key play. You gotta get the first down here, and he's gonna be in a bunch formation on the bottom half of the screen. Those are the routes that the Iowa players are going to be running, however, take a look at what's going on just past them. There's defensive players who are still communicating as to what's going on. This is just a huge mistake. I mean, with two seconds left, you have to be ready for a ball to be snapped. You can't be turned over and communicating. I know sometimes it's hard to figure out exactly what's going on, but sometimes with two seconds left, especially on a fourth down and two, you kind of just have to go with what you're going with. You have to be aware of the play clock and be aware that they're about to snap the ball and maybe try to shout something, but you can't be turning around to make sure they hear you at this point. They clearly just weren't on the same page, which is why they needed to communicate something, but it's also going to be a lot worse once the ball is snapped, because now they're just way too far deep. I mean, look at how open Fant is here. There's no reason that on the bottom half of the screen, the closest guy to the first down marker is going to be five yards past the first down marker. I mean, there's just no reason for that, especially when there's a receiver who's open in that area. I mean, Fant's going to be wide open, so why am I showing this play? Well, the reason is because this is not going to be a perfect throw by any means. Despite Fant being wide open and probably thinking touchdown once he saw what was going on, the throw is going to be very low, so we've got to make sure he catches the ball first. But that's going to be exactly what he does. He shifted his body weight around, got down, and was able to make the catch past the first down marker. It's a great catch for sure, but it was also great awareness, because, you know, if he's only one yard down the field, then he shouldn't try to dive to make the catch. He should try to come back to the ball, make the catch, and then dive to get past the first down marker. After all, moving the ball downfield one yard would mean absolutely nothing in this situation, but he knew that he was past the first down marker, and he knew that he just has to get the first down more than anything, so that's why he dove to get that first down. This next play will be another good way of how Iowa was able to game plan to get Noah Fant open, and how he was able to take advantage of that game plan and run his route very well. It's going to be a cover four zone, but with a blitz, I meaning there's only going to be six men back in coverage, and only two people in the midfield with four people deep. And once again, this is going to be pretty simple. Those are going to be the routes on the left side of the screen, and basically the way it works is that the tight end closest to the middle of the screen is going to run straight to the middle of the screen, basically, and cut in. And then all Fant has to do is run to the corner of the screen, and then cut in basically to the zone second closest to the left side of the screen, and and in theory, he could get wide open. It's similar to the play I showed you earlier, and after the ball is snapped, and after this play starts to develop, as you see, that receiver closest to the middle of the screen is doing a very good job of running his route. His route is crucial on this point. He's the setup man, if you will, where he's going to run in and basically force that other defensive back to have to follow him. So now, when Fant cuts in, he's going to get wide open. However, what I really like about Fant, what he does here, is take a look at how he takes some off of his speed. He kind of really jogs into the end zone here. He's trying to maximize being open for as long as possible, and granted this video is actually slowed down, so it looks a little bit more extreme than it actually is, but he still does go very slowly towards the end zone. Really, as I've kind of alluded to, his speed creates matchup nightmares, and he'll be another good example of that. Basically, it's going to be man coverage, as once again, it's a first down and goal situation at the one yard line, so there definitely could be a run here. So basically, what's going to happen here is first, Fant's going to be in motion to the top half of the screen, and since another defensive player is going to be following him, this now does two things. The first one, which is a very obvious one, is the fact that it lets Iowa know that it's going to be man coverage. But the other purpose it serves is now Fant is going to break back to the bottom half of the screen, and this now means he's basically going to have a head start breaking to the bottom of the screen. So it's essentially a foot race to that point. That's basically the way this play is going to work out. But Fant already knows that before this ball is snapped. So he's basically going to get a head start. And because he is so fast, he's able to easily win this foot race. I mean, look at that. He's a solid yard further than his assigned player. And it results in an easy touchdown. And while typically, unless you're Pete Carroll, most coaches don't like to throw the ball on the one yard line if they can avoid it. This is a pretty low risk play. Because if it's thrown to Fant's left, well, he should still be able to run over at least get a hand on it. And if it's thrown to the right, well, then it would just fall incomplete. So it's pretty low risk, high reward situation. And so, especially when you have a guy like Fant going into the play, it kind of turns into like an 85% chance of a touchdown and then like 14.9% chance of an incompletion. Very small chance of an interception, very high chance of a touchdown, so that's the kind of plays that can really open up if you have a guy like Fant. And it's not just that too. I mean, again, I keep talking about his speed, but his route running is really what sets him apart. I mean, it's not like 4.5 is that fast for a receiver. It's clearly fast for a tight end.
tight end, but it's not that fast for a receiver necessarily. However, because of his route running, that allows him to beat so many other players. Like on this one, he's running an out route, and take a look at how this play is going to develop. He starts off doing what you're supposed to do in an out route, which is run just straight up the middle. Sometimes guys will already start to cut to the outside, but if you do that, you're basically just giving away what you're doing. As of right now, as the first second fan actually moves any way to the top half of the screen, but look at how far he's going to be able to cut over to the top half of the screen once he finally commits to doing that. I mean, that's just great football when he's able to get very open and make a catch for a decent gain. I mean, that's just what you like to see. That's just good route running. I know it kind of looks like, okay, whatever, he just made a cut, what's the big deal? But to be that big of a guy and still be able to cut so seamlessly, I think a lot of people don't realize how tough that is. It's kind of what makes those big receivers like Julio Jones and Calvin Johnson so special, is to have that giant size and be able to move so seamlessly. Also, if you want to switch sports, it's oftentimes why big men in basketball aren't the ones who are point guards. Every now and then you have a guy like LeBron James or Magic who are tall and can move with the ball, but a lot of guys can't. So when you have a guy who is big and can move, it can be so effective. Here's another example of that. I was going up against a cover one blitz this time, and those are going to be the routes that they're going to be running. So one route that you might want to look to throw to here would be the end of fence route, as it is going to be a crossing route, and it could get open in the top half of the end zone for a touchdown. It's third down and goal here too, so gaining just a few yards does absolutely nothing for you. But one thing you're going to see right after this play develops is first, Fant does a very good job of making sure that he gets a step on his assigned man. He's doing a very good job at this point. Because of that, his assigned man is going to basically try to create some contact to slow him down. However, that's not really going to work out at all. He's still easily able to run up and get wide open in the end zone for a touchdown. There's actually a reason I'm showing this play, and it's because probably Noah Fant's biggest criticism has actually been his strength, which is kind of interesting. Typically, I try to avoid reading anything about a player and just watch the tape and figure out what's going on about him. However, sometimes I just do pick up on things just from, you know, consuming the media like we all do. But I have heard that he has some struggles in the strength department, and I have kind of seen it a little, but it's nothing really too major. I I mean, he still has the ability to, in open field, easily shed some contact, and, you know, he blocks fine, so I wouldn't really be too worried about that. I heard some people saying that really he should probably try to gain some weight, maybe gain 10 pounds to really be able to make sure that he can make those blocks better and also shed contact more easily. However, I'm not sure if I would do that if I was Fant. I think what makes Fant so special is his route running, his ability to move, and his speed. That's a large part of the reason that the Denver Broncos selected him with the 20th overall pick. So if you feel like you can pick up some weight while not losing any of those attributes, well then sure, go ahead, go for it. However, I don't really think that's possible. I mean, just for comparison, he's 6'4", 249 pounds, and meanwhile, someone like O.J. Howard is 6'6", and listed at 242 pounds, although I do believe he's actually gained some weight from when that was listed, but even so, they're about the same weight, and O.J. Howard is 2 inches taller. I mean, a guy like Rob Gronkowski was 6'6", and 265 pounds, so 16 pounds more, but also 2 inches higher, so not really that big of a difference. You also got, like, a Travis Kelsey, who's 6'6", and 260, so yeah, there are some guys who weigh a little bit more, but those guys are also a couple inches taller. Really, I don't think a fan weight is that bad at all. If it was up to me, I'd say you accept the fact that he will never block like Rob Gronkowski can and just have him focus on running routes, being able to be effective, and still be able to block very well because he still can block, just not quite on an elite level, just on a very good level. Again, that's just my opinion, but personally, I wouldn't want to mess up a good thing too much. Because, I mean, look at this play, for example. It's going to be man coverage, and it's going to start off as though it's basically just a go route. As you see, he's starting off running as though he's just going to go straight down the field, but he's actually going to cut a little bit around to the top half of the screen just by a couple of steps. It's a good way to gain some separation against an opposing player. However, of course, the problem is you have to be able to change direction while running at a top speed. But as you see, he does a very good job of changing his direction, and now he's basically aligned with that defensive player, and now he has some space, so all he has to do is just run as fast as he can and try to gain as much separation as possible. In that foot race, he's able to gain another step and makes for an easy touchdown. I mean, again, that's just wide receiver-like tendencies out of a tight end, which is just so effective. Well, I do have to be honest, personally, if I was in Denver's situation, I wouldn't have traded back, and I would have instead drafted Dwayne Haskins. If you aren't going to go quarterback with that 10th pick, I think what they did makes a ton of sense. They did get a quarterback with their second round pick in Drew Locke, and you want to have a good tight end if you have a rookie quarterback, because tight ends can often be a safety net for rookie quarterbacks. And if it's going to be Joe Flacco, well, we know he can throw to tight ends, because that's literally all Baltimore has under roster. He's a matchup nightmare, and while Denver definitely could look to improve on the offensive side of the ball, I definitely think that Fant, at the very least, is a pretty good start. <laughs>